technology enables us to to collaborate clearly in different ways, to reflect in different ways, uh, to um, to publish in in different ways. So, so there's a huge part of me which is really uh, sees it as a good thing, a great thing. It's enabling and empowering. And I, I work with a, um, a global organisation for mentoring, which works with women in developing nations to give them access to um, business skills training effectively so that they can run their micro businesses. These are two or three people. They can run them more effectively, make more profits, build financial power, which in turn gives political power, which in turn drives social change, all powered by technology. Recently, I've started becoming more concerned about the the broadening of the gaps between people who are empowered by technology and people who are left behind by it. and so that's very much more in my mind now. And it's something that I've built into the social leadership model um, in, in, the, in the section on social capital. I now include a section looking at, um, uh, looking at equality and, um, and humility and the need to um, ensure that everybody is brought along on that journey. And people are disenfranchised not just because of a lack of access to technology. They're disenfranchised because of, you know, cultural constraints and considerations as well. Um, but I do have this sort of growing feeling that the people who get it and are capable with it and have access to it may be accelerating further away from people who don't. Um, so that's something which I guess we, we need. That's my sort of note of caution amongst it all.